All right. Um, well, thanks for everybody for hanging on. And um, you know, it's it, we were just laughing. It's funny at a technology conference. Of course, there's technology issues, and it's the most simplest thing trying to get the video cable working. Um, you know, as I'm sure we're all aware. Um, but uh, again, thanks again for talking. Um, uh, I'm Brian Nelson with IBM, and uh, we uh, recently worked on a project to uh, help migrate from one cloud uh, to another. Um, the work that a lot of times we do is, is bringing uh, data on premises. So we're really concerned with on-prem cloud. Um, and so, uh, you know, in terms of having customers or whoever, uh, often there's data that's in different clouds, you know, and you want to move it from one cloud to another. Um, you know, there's a lot of different reasons, um, you know, for that, as you can imagine. Um, the, uh, you know, maybe you want to, you have your data in the public cloud and you want to enjoy the experience of doing an on-prem cloud. Uh, maybe you have an on-prem cloud and you want to experience the joy of doing public cloud. Um, you know, or you just have two clouds and, and uh, you know, two storage places and the data needs to be moved from one to the other. Um, and um, <clears throat> when you're thinking about it, I mean, obviously there's a, there's a number of concerns that you have to do. Um, uh, primarily that the, the storage, layout is, is usually quite different. You can't just essentially take this data and plop it down and suddenly have it start working. It has to be a migration. Um, you may also have uh, files that you want to start getting into, into the objects. Um, you, there's also quite often uh, meta, metadata associated with the objects that need to get migrated. Um, you also I mean, you have ACLs, uh, you know, th different kinds of permissions. Um, and uh, different vendors who offer cloud storage may also have uh, additional value add that they have on their object storage. And so you, there's concerns about when you migrate to a different um, storage system. Um, and so when you're thinking about it, um, you, you know, you want to try and um, estimate, well, how long is this going to take? You know, the, how much disruption is this going to be to my, to my clients and my customer? Um, uh, you know, it, it, can I accept downtime? Um, and if you, know, if you can't accept downtime, then you may you, you want to look into more of a online migration where you have the systems up and running and clients can can access them while while you're doing the migration. Um, you have existing clients who you know are talking to your old system, and you got to start getting them rolled over to start talking to your new system. Um, and then while you're doing all this, uh, you know you're reading and writing a lot of stuffs flowing across the network. Uh, there's going to be performance issues with that. And then when you're done, you know, when can you say, okay, this, I'm done with this old storage, I can stop paying for it, I can throw away the hardware or, you know, completely reuse it. Um, so uh, obviously there's a number of solutions today. Um, you can, you know, actually carry the data from one site to another, um, you know, when the systems are the same, just however that happens, disks, tape, whatever. Um, a number of third-party vendors are also involved in this space. Um, you know, and so depending on the solutions that that vendor offers, you know, that may, that can also work. Typically that costs money. Um, you know, quite often we end up just writing tools ourselves to go ahead and do the migration. Um, and there's nothing that kind of works for all solutions. It's, it, you know, it, it's, uh, you're definitely going to have to take a look at the situation to see what'll work in your environment. Um, so what we were doing, um, you know, as I said, um, you know, we have uh, customers who are, you know, trying to move from the public cloud to more private clouds. And so, um, you know, they, they just were kind of interested in kind of a, a way to do that. And so um, what, uh, so what we do is um, we have this object migration tool. And so uh, right now we support the Amazon S3, uh, Swift Cloud, and um, as well as just ob uh, files on the file system. And then the, uh, the object migration tool um, will be able to migrate all those into a uh, Swift object storage solution. And um, this makes to use of the, um, the uh, migration middle tool uh, that's, that's part of Swift in the part of Swift community, as you can see right here. Um, and the way that, that this works, it's a bit of middleware that uh, takes a look at the request. So when you do a get to Swift for your object, um, you do an initial get the it request flows through normally. Um, in this case, the object's not there. And so the middleware notices, hey, there's a 404. And so what, what it then does is um, it'll take a look at the container that the object is coming from. And it looks at the metadata on the container to see if 
there's a little bit of migration information if there, that's there that's linking it to, a, to an external cloud. And if so, what the middleware does is it goes, it goes ahead and does a get and uh, then sends it on um, into, the, uh, into the Swift object store. And so then that object then becomes an object. Um, so the middleware kind of becomes a client in this, in this, um, in this space, but the, um, the actual customer external client doesn't really know this is happening. They just do a get. If it's, if the object's local, then it'll pull it from there. Um, and if it's not there locally, it'll get it from the remote one and it'll also make a copy in the, um, in the local storage. So the next time it'll get it from local. Um, and, um, a little bit more detail on how the, the migration, that migration middleware works. Um, so it's, it's going to um, read the configuration information um, uh, from the migration file, which um, ha has some information. We'll get into that a little bit later. Um, and so what, the, so what that tool does is um, when you start it up, you have to initially configure it with uh, who the cloud provider is that you're going to be pulling the objects from. Um, and then based on that provider, it will um, get the list of, it'll list out the container to see, you know, to get the information of the container and the metadata. It then creates that container in the Swift storage uh, and applies some metadata on that container so that the middleware will have access to it. And then um, it will list all the objects in the, um, in the source container. And then for all of those objects, it will then do a get in your Swift to trigger the middleware to do the pull of the objects. Um, and in this way, it can completely migrate a whole container into your, into your new Swift. Um, and while this is happening, you know, your old clients can still be talking to your, your old data storage, um, as well as to your new one, new, your clients can be pointing to the new storage because, um, if there are any objects that aren't there, they'll get pulled from the old storage. Um, so we have a few enhancements though we did in, into the middleware. Um, so we, uh, for the S3 ACLs, I mean, for the S3 ACL support, yeah, we added some more into the, um, the live cloud there. Um, we also did work for the uh, large objects, and so uh, the, the migration can now uh, split up the large objects into segments, um, and then we have also support for the Keystone uh, V2 and V3 authentication. Um, and uh, so the, the tool is, is, is pretty simple here. Um, you know, we were just, uh, there's a tar and just with these tools in it, and uh, when you run the setup, it'll put the files in the right places in Swift. Um, the uh, proxy server needs a modification to have the uh, data mig migration middleware, um, as we showed in the example. That's the middleware that's going to trigger this, this action. Um, and uh, there's also some information into, in the data mi migration section that has uh, information about the system that you're pulling from. Um, and so uh, here's just a, some quick examples of I was doing S3 migration. Um, in the uh, in our tools mig migration file, we would um, you have to say what the uh, S3 information is, which is you know these variables, and then just uh, we would run the the migration script. Um, and uh, in S3, uh, obviously I have to do the the first section is the S3 modification I'd have to do in the proxy server to enable it enable the proxy server to be able to understand S3 communication, and then also um, <clears throat> in the proxy server. Uh, have information about the uh, source cluster uh, so that the middleware can pull that. And the bottom is, is how uh, we generate the, uh, the S3 secret using that credential create. Um, and if we were doing Swift, um, obviously you probably, you know, these variables all look very familiar, but, um, you know, this is saying, okay, if I'm going from one Swift uh, storage to, to my Swift storage, then you know, I just got to have that information so the middleware can make use of that. Um, we also have file, um, file to object. And so in this case, I'm, this is a local directory. And so I'm saying, okay, this is, this is how I would uh, transfer slash ETC all the objects underneath it. Um, the objects will be stored as, uh, the container will be ETC and, and all the files under ETC will be objects in the ETC container in this case. Um, so, uh, you know, in this kind of solution, it would be good, you know, if you're going from uh, S3 Swift or a file system and you're going into another Swift, um, uh, through the, um, you know, it'd be very easy to add to other, from other cloud systems as is Azure, Atomos and stuff. Um, 
The, um, and it also, uh, we pull some of the, some of the metadata um, in Swift and S3, obviously. Um, the, uh, but of course, there are limitations in everything. Um, the, when we're, the data that we attach to the container um, to, do the, uh, to do the pull from the source storage, um, that's on the container, so, so you will have sort of the authentication information there. Um, that'll be something to kind of be concerned about in your environment. Um, the, the tool only really migrates the sort of the Swift attributes, the object data, the user metadata, and then the, uh, the ACLs. Uh, and if, if you're in an object storage that has uh, other vendor-specific attributes, then those, you'll need some other way to, to migrate those. Um, and right now, it's just migrating uh, the, the one container in that user account um, that you specified. So um, the tool right now doesn't allow you to say, migrate everything in this object storage. It's really just um, on a, 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 a user basis. Um, so, and this would be if, if you want to make a new, uh, a new driver, like I was saying, to, to Azure or whatever. Um, this is uh, kind of the, the steps we would take. Just, um, you know, a lot of the frameworks there. It's just a matter of uh, hooking it into the live cloud um, so that it can pull the information and then saving the configuration um, variables. So we do have a quick demo, um, which is really just what I was talking about. But based on time, I think I'm going to switch, uh, skip the demo. Sorry about that. But it was basically, so the demo would, was going to show the um, untarring it. But let me go ahead and skip that. So it showed the untarring it and running it and, and pulling it from Swift. Um, but then I know we're all hungry. So, um, so th like I said, this tool, um, uh, we primarily did it uh, because we had customers who, who wanted to migrate their data into the Spectrum scale in the on-premise cloud. Uh, but it can be used by, by anyone, obviously. Um, uh, we're still uh, doing a little bit of work on it, um, but check on developer works uh, for its availability. Um, and uh, like I said, you know, this is part of Spectrum scale, which is our clustered uh, parallel file system um, facility. And um, I think that's it. All right, well, thank you very much. Any questions? All right. Enjoy your lunch. <laughs> thank, thank you for thank you for sticking around.